Yo, what's up guys, Mr. Balance here and in this video I'm gonna give you an overview of the skills in Mountain Blade Bannerlord as well as I'm gonna give you my recommendation for a late game build based on uh, army size, on building your own kingdom and conquering the land of Calradia. So without further ado, we're gonna first go through the uh, character creation and these are some of the choices that uh, I personally recommend and the ones that I choose to pick as I said before for a late game build focused on having your own army and conquering the land. Now, for culture we're gonna go with Vandia 20% more upgrade XP for troops. Now this one is pretty important because in this game there aren't really any sources of uh, providing experience for your troops passively. Yes, there is something like uh, leadership that does give a very small boost, but it's pretty insignificant uh, in the, the larger areas of the game. So this one would really help out with upgrading your troops and keeping up your army top notch. So I would go for this one. There are other Good options, I think the speed option is pretty nice to have as well, but I think generally this one is the better one. Then for uh, for the next ones, we're gonna go with Urban Merchants, Trade, Charm and Intelligence, Your Way with People, Charm, Leadership and Social, Markets and Caravanserize, Trade, Charm and Social, Stuttgart with the Garrisons, Crossbow, Engineering and Intelligence, uh, You Invested Some Money in a Workshop, trade, smithing, intelligence, calculating and renown and finally you organize the travelers to break out leadership, charm and social. As you can see we've only got uh, social and intelligence and we got um, pretty much nothing on the other four categories and this is because uh, with this build we want to focus on getting intelligence 10. 10 is the max attribute you can get in Bannerlord so we want 10 intelligence and 7 in social and that's gonna pretty much max out everything in this game uh, right now in its current state in 1.1.1 you can get a max level of 30 or 31 with the help of smithing. Smithing does give you some more skills and that way you can get all the way to level 31 if you want to but either level 30 or 31 you're gonna have 25 attribute points in total so if we have 10 plus 7 that's gonna be 17 and then we have 8 here that's gonna be 25 in total and you will also get 42 of these uh, green focus points in total at level 30 and if you manage to get level 31 you'll get one additional focus point so 43 focus points now I'm going to show you how this works in another menu but uh, just another thing that I want to mention is that uh, we didn't really want to get the crossbow here but we kind of were forced to and I'm going to show you why so uh, here we pick intelligence, charm leadership social, trade charm social this one right here so here we don't really have much choice so we have to go with this one because you have to choose between your riding, bow, endurance, polearm, one-handed, vigor, throwing, bow, control and we want to go either social and intelligence as you can see there is no social here there is only this one which gives intelligence gives engineering which uh, is not really what we wanted but one point in engineering is not bad it's actually pretty useful and then one point in crossbow we're gonna have to take it there's no other way around it all right let's move on all right so we created our character and here we are in the character menu now uh, you may see that we have a ton of skills here and we're actually level 30 which is uh, pretty much the level cap so I, I used a mod and uh, I cheated my way and got uh, my all got all my skills uh, maxed out right and uh, this is what we managed to get level 30 and as you can see we are really close to level 31 and you can get level 31 
if you go for smithing 225 because that will give you either two additional focus points here in one handed and two handed or another endurance point which is going to be just enough to go to get you to level 31 and grant you an additional focus point that you can use as you like but in order to do that you may have to sacrifice some other things and for this particular build we don't go to level 31 because that means we would need to sacrifice one point of intelligence or one point of social and we do not want that you want to have at least seven so that you can get over the threshold of 275 because in this game uh, the way it works is one attribute point gives you 14 skill points on all the three uh, skills that are related to said attribute so if you were to drop to six here minus 14 that would be 274 so we would be one point short of getting the final perk there so it is essential to get seven attribute points again one attribute point gives you 14 skill points for each one of these three and then focus points gives you 40 so five focus points that gives you 200 extra and then the 88 you start from uh, 4 at 1 and then each additional one gives you 14 and 10 is the max you can get and 10 and 5 focus points gives you a maximum of 330 now the the build here is not correct I was experimenting here a bit so I would actually recommend one engineering and then this focus point would go into tactics that's the way I would like to have it and everything else uh, looks fine five in bow one in crossbow because we are forced to get it two in throwing three in riding uh, I was uh, thinking about going four in riding but I think three is good enough four smithing one tactics five charm five leadership five trade five steward five medicine and finally one engineering now let's go through each and every one and uh, uh, I'm gonna give you a basic overview and some of my thoughts and recommendations so first off we have one-handed you have the description here so this one you obviously use one-handed and you level it up if you click the information here it will actually tell you exactly what it gives you so it gives you speed and damage for your one-handed weapons now if you want to go for one-handed I recommend the uh, uh, well you can go one point in vigor and that will give you the ability to get all these three to 32 which means you'll be able to you'll be able to access the first perk and if the first perk is pretty important because you can actually get hit points so uh, even if you don't want to use the uh, the specific weapon you can get some free hit points so you have hit points for one-handed you have hit points for the two-handed and you have hit points uh, on the pole arm as well there's no other option here you'll have to go with the hit points so that's a good thing to do if you want to uh, myself uh, I just got rid of that because I want to focus max on my army having a, a little bit of extra HP is not gonna count that much once you have a, a huge army right is you just let the army do all the work and you just sit back and enjoy all right so that's pretty much all I would do for uh, these three here uh, when uh, I'm trying to focus on an army uh, one-handed and pole arm are mainly personal skills two-handed does have some utility as well for your army uh, for instance you have here party renown gain after battles plus 10 percent this one is a party member though so you can have a companion with this skill you don't need to have it on your character necessarily so you can take advantage uh, of this in a different way also you can get rating speed increased uh, but probably this one is better and then at 200 you got uh, this one here it's another party member so again you can have a companion with this one enemy begins with minus one morale or up to five troops get more XP when you take down an enemy and then the rest is just a personal boost to your attacks and whatnot same for pole arm same for one hand so if you want your character to be a complete uh, and total warlord you can uh, go uh, some get, go uh, invest in some of these melee skills then we have a range skills we have bow crossbow and throwing um, so here we get the three control and the reason is that 
uh, smithing provides one control so we uh, we get one extra attribute point there so we go five in bow uh, because uh, we get the following so we can get nearby troops 10% accuracy at 225 or you can go for more damage for yourself but if you want to focus on the army you're probably going to want to go with this one then you also can get uh, uh, more accuracy for your bow which is nice because with this build you're mostly going to focus on uh, on your bow right so this is going to help quite a bit then you can train your archers and uh, this one is really nice here plus three to party size which i believe is currently bugged but hopefully it will get a fix soon and then you have some uh, minus morale but these ones are uh, are nothing uh, too special the later ones these ones here are the ones that we want so that's uh, what we can get there for crossbow there isn't much you can get here There's, it's only a personal perk so you get more damage i guess you can get some uh, some food here but it, it's not uh, that important it's not going to help you that much you have some damage here but uh, the one that is really good is uh, this one and unfortunately this is uh, the very last one so it's 275 check this out every time an enemy is killed by one of your bows reduce the enemy's morale by one so this could be um fairly useful when you are fighting other armies but it's just it costs so much even if we had five focus points as you see it only gets us to 232 so up to that level i feel like these points are more useful from the bow tree than from the the crossbow tree check this out it's even a party member one so you can have a companion for this one if you wanted to and then another party member this one is governor which doesn't help your main character this is for uh, companions or for whoever you put as governor so this is <laughs> this is not going to help you and then uh, we have throwing here and for this one um so we go two focus points because you want to get this one at the level 100 right plus five to party size why not it's a it doesn't require much investment throwing is also pretty good to have it deals a lot of damage from closer range and uh, yeah why why not plus five to party size definitely better than what we could get in say crossbow or any other things in here next up we got uh, riding for riding uh, okay so this one you get uh, mount difficulty speed maneuver so uh, the highest mount requires about 90 riding i believe so uh, it's a good idea to have uh, uh, above a certain threshold so you can uh, ride the higher quality horses but you still have some things in here such as you can get party size uh, what else I guess uh, that's about it you, you can get the party size and then you just level it up to get uh, higher quality horses and as well for the for the speed and the maneuver because you're gonna be riding a lot right whenever you fight an army you're gonna be riding a horse so this skill is gonna be useful there is another one here that gives plus four to party size but I opt to go for uh, other things instead of this uh, plus four party size you already get a plus two here so it should be fine then for athletics i actually opt to go for zero i was gonna go two points because that would give you uh 80 more points so that would be 98 which means you would be able to get all the way over here to 75 and get plus four hit points so if you want a tankier build you can do this grab the four hit points here and then you can grab the hit points out of those three as well grab the hit points from medicine and you can have a pretty uh, decent health pool but yeah i'm just not gonna bother with uh, the four hit points uh, sure the character is not gonna run very well or his running speed is gonna be pretty low but you're mostly gonna be using uh, the riding and other times uh, you won't need to run that much because you're just gonna sit back and shoot your arrows at the enemy so it should be fine then in smithing we want to go four focus points because we want to get 
this one right here, controlled smith, immediately increase control by one. So this one will increase every skill here by 14, which is important because it will bring us, uh, it will give us this perk here, uh, the 225 one. So you can select this one right here, or if you want more damage for your character, you can do this one. And then it also helps us with getting this one for the plus five to party size. So it is fairly important to get the smith. And if you want to go to level 31, you will have to go to 225. And then you can get more skill points here and you get a free focus point from the level up as well. In terms of crafting, I'm not sure how efficient it is at this level. I actually haven't uh, haven't done this yet. This is just uh, theory crafting right now, and we're just uh, looking at this point uh, uh, for for this purpose, right? For for this build, whatever you get uh, on these perks here and the crafting, that's that's a bonus, really. If you get something good, that's nice. But the focus of this build is again to boost your army. As much as possible okay next up we got scouting so scouting in my opinion uh, is not very good and you shouldn't invest in it uh, you get track detection max track the spotting distance track information yeah you're probably not gonna be using those and then if you look at here you see uh, the perks are for scouts this this one is personal but it's tracks become more informative I mean it could be fun I guess but uh, I fail to see how useful that would be increased chance to spot parties uh, I mean if, if there was a stealth mechanic or something maybe but uh, not really there is such a thing in the game can spot hideouts yeah that's <laughs> whatever right uh, who cares uh, then you get food consumption. I mean, fine. You just buy more food. It's not. It's not a big deal. Bonus speed with high party morale. Now here it becomes better, right? But again, they are party members, so you can have a companion with this skill. So you don't need to have. Uh, I guess this one would be nice. Eight H eight HP, but it's level two hundred and fifty. So you gotta get all these trash here just to get to the good part. And then 3% movement speed, obviously nice, but 275, oof. So I'd rather give uh, this to a companion, because you all, you have, most of these are party members, so they will add up to your uh, party anyway. And then tactics, as I said, I like getting one point. So if, if we get one point here, it will bump it up to 58, because it's plus 40, right? Remember, one focus point equals plus 40. So it would bring us to 58, which gives us the two first perks which are actually pretty nice check this out so you have cavalry attacks 10 percent more morale loss uh, as if you are a party leader and then tactical superiority party leader as well your soldiers deal five percent more damage in simulations so there you go this still seem pretty useful and then the next one is just uh, allows troop placement so it's kind of eh, whatever and you have what increased amount of ammo whatever right <laughs> At 50, I think uh, is the the threshold where you should start stop before uh, regretting <laughs> because these ones aren't very good. There might be some better ones in here, but I like battle reinforcement distance, army cohesion, army supply consumption. Uh, yeah, they're probably not that good to be honest. Uh, one focus point should be enough. Roguery. Uh, this one has some decent things, but uh, oh, for tactics, you also get simulation advantage, I guess, with, uh, with the points, so uh, at least there's that. Uh, Roger, you get battle loot, and that's pretty much it. So you get some uh, village raids, then you get intimidation, if less relationship loss with intimidation, increased morale gain from raiding villages, more loot from enemies. So uh, there are small bonuses that are probably not gonna be that impactful so uh, I don't like and this one look at this this one is for scout uh, escape captivity at 200 <laughs> you know that's pretty pointless you would want this at the very beginning if anything or uh, I guess it can come um, it might come useful later <laughs> if, if you get captured a lot bribes cheaper better deals with ransom 
by the time you get to 250 you will have all the gold you need so it won't matter at that point and then maybe this one would be fun to play around with able to recruit bandits to your party instead of slaying them but again it's more it's more for fun right rather than uh, utility all right and then we get to the good part right so we we sacrificed all these skills above i guess for some uh, select few ones like bow riding smithing and then we just pump everything into social intelligence and their uh, skills here so charm we go seven attributes and five focus points that's going to max out at 288 which means we're going to be able to get all the perks and uh, we want to do this because well this is going to help uh, your kingdom you get the relation increase with npcs then you get a uh, more influence which you're probably going to have a ton of influence anyway but hey might as well get even more why not and then you get the loyalty bonus you can get a bunch of stuff here security bonus loyalty bonus oh this is for governor so i guess it's not gonna help you but look at this we have clan leader here more influence uh this is another governor personal more influence for winning tournaments relationship penalty then increase race relationship with same gender or with diff or with uh, opposite gender uh persuasion so lots of um conversational skills in here renown uh, more renown from ballast maybe this one would be better and then finally probably this one here barter penalty so this one will help with the influence will help you create allies faster next up we got uh, leadership this one gives you morale and garrison size so look at this at max it gives you plus 57 morale that's a lot of morale it also in improves your uh, garrison and then uh, uh yeah so this is the, the the small xp that you can get at first but uh, mainly you want one of the last ones i'm not sure which one it is this one or this one they they're the same for some reason but it will increase your party size look at this plus one after 250 so 38 more men just from this and then you, you can get more xp you got a bunch of other good stuff in here that's governor party leader cohesion less influence i guess this one could be interesting governor again party leader uh able to revert bandits uh maybe maybe you could, you could do that lower wages and another governor uh additional 20 morale when you are attacking check this out that one is actually really nice but the the boost that you get up here and the the, the final perks final few perks there are really worth it in my opinion then you have trade so for trade you get penalty reduction which is not that big of a deal and uh, trading in general might not be that uh, fun to do especially for longer periods of time however i do max it out because you can do some interesting stuff here like you can trade settlements when bartering caravans and workshops gain influence so again it will tie into your charm as well and then you also get plus 15 to party size when you max it out which is not bad at all along with uh, all the other perks that you can get and since you're gonna have uh, seven in social it will get boosted fairly nice as you can see all the way up to the finish line and finally we got uh, the final or we have the the last attribute three here with the intelligence steward it's one of the best ones nothing nothing to say here increased party size 82 men and then we have a good perks here plus one companion for each town not bad we have some perks as well plus five to party size for each fifth you own so you can select some really good ones in here but just having this party size increased by 82 is uh, stellar you definitely want this one medicine uh, you can get uh, some health right at the beginning plus 10 uh, you get casual survival chance healing rate increase for uh, oh if you get the governor this one counts as well but the thing is this one seems really broken and I think they're gonna fix it they're gonna nerf this because check this out so at 275 you get the following troops start the battle with the bonus hit points of party leaders medicine skill minus 200 
divided by 2. So we have 330, that's 130 divided by 2. That's 65 HP extra for all the troops. That is insane, isn't it? I wonder how this will work out. I haven't actually tested that. It should be pretty interesting. And finally, one point in engineering. So this one is good for sieging, but you can have a companion do the sieging or do the engineering for you, which is uh, what I would like to do. So with one point, uh, it will still give you a fair amount because we have 10 intelligence and there are a few good things that we can get here. So catapults more effective. And then we have this one at 125 armor, 10% more effective. And I think that's pretty much it. These other ones are party member, see? So we can have your companion cover them. All right, and that pretty much sums it up. So again, one attribute point gives plus 14 to all three skills. A focus point gives plus 40. Um, and then in terms of progression, you would, I would suggest you start with, well, you can get a, a few points into, I'd probably go with uh, two into throwing because it's, it's going to be easy to get to 100, right? And bow you can do later on or as you progress. Um, riding, smithing you're going to want, well, smithing you can do whenever you can, right? Smithing is kind of weird in this game because it requires stamina, so it's going to take a while. But once you get uh, the control here, it will boost uh, your skills up there, so it's pretty pretty nice. Riding, uh, you get it as you can. Level it up, level it up as you can. Tactics is going to level itself. I mean, all of these are going to level by themselves, right? You just need to use the, the proper thing associated. In smithing, you have to remember to use your stamina and smith when in town and then for charm uh, leadership this might take a while uh yeah you will get there eventually trade is gonna be really tricky so for trade you need to make profit from trading or you want to operate caravans i'm not sure if the caravans work or not some people are saying they don't work uh, make profit from trading i guess i can show you how that works uh, but uh, basically you want to buy uh, cheap materials or cheap uh, cheap goods and then uh, sell them for profit that's how you're gonna get a lot of uh, trading skill points and you can actually see when you when you hover your mouse over a good it will show you in green if it's cheap it will show you in normal text if it's average price or it will show you in red if it's uh, if the price is high so you want to buy green and you want to sell red and that way you make a lot of profit which will give you a lot of points so hopefully uh, you understand the gist of it steward this one will increase super fast so you want to get the points fairly fast once you start getting food once you start getting a high variety of food uh, it'll tell you here uh, so gain party morale from food variety so you need the food variety first and then it will start boosting up. So you don't need it immediately, but once you start getting food variety, which is still fairly early on, you're gonna want to max this out because it will boost your party size uh, uh, super fast. And then medicine as well, probably the second one, or, or these two you're gonna want to focus on maxing out fairly fast. Medicine obviously is gonna be really helpful, it's gonna help you recover faster, you can have uh, you have good perks in here as well HP plus 10 for instance and then more recovery perks so the faster you get your medicine up the more things you can do with your troops and then finally engineering uh, there's not much you can do here you're just gonna have to wait until you can siege and then it will slowly level up and after you level it up you just uh, use a companion and uh, you forget about it right you, you let your companion do everything and same for scouting so that's pretty much it for this build let me know let me know what you guys think uh, let me know what you uh, what build you prefer do you prefer going for more uh, melee oriented or uh, i don't know maybe some roguery or, or do you like trading like what what kind of build do you prefer all right 
hopefully that answers all the question let me know if there's anything else you would like to say about this video and as always thanks so much for watching and i shall see you next time have a good one and take care